to have held their hands in comfort and offered a warm hug and a shoulder to ease their suffering. Will the tables have turned happily? I have become injured. Does that make me any less deserving of this generosity, care, and support that I have offered my patients over the years? I do not believe so. Three years later, the government finally decided, oh, now we have to act. Not out of nowhere, obviously, out of pressure. So they introduced new legislation coming in January 1 that will open entitlement to workers who have chronic or traumatic mental stress, suffer on the job. So it wipes out, yes, applause. It wipes out, it wipes out the previous discriminatory limitation that only workers who had a so-called acute reaction to a sudden and unexpected traumatic event could get in the doors of workers' compensation. Uh, that is obviously an extremely welcome change. Further pressure in the past six months has forced the government's hand again. And now, not only are, did they remove this limitation starting January 1st, but they removed it in a significant part for retroactive claims that are still before the Workers' Compensation Board or Tribunal. I'm not going to get into all the legal niceties about those retroactivity clauses because, let's face it, none of us really understand how they're going to work yet. Um, but important to note that some of your workers, some of your claims, even that are already in the system, will have the benefit of the new legislation. Again, because of pressure by unions and... Uh, Creating an initiative in which we can have someone, I guess, or, an organize, or groups in every workplace specifically to, to be a point, a point of comfort or a point of reference where workers who sometimes don't know where to turn for support can have somewhere to go and provide it. And, and sometimes it's creepy because let's face it, it takes a lot of courage to stand up and say, you know what, I am actually sad. You know what, I am actually going through something in life. And if, if we can establish something in which workers can turn to discreetly and confide in, like, like her sister said, I mean, she was fortunate enough to have a, a supervisor she trusted. Um, I just think this is this is very this is very important because if, if we create something in which we have that kind of support, you're, you're just building the loyalty, you're you're building a family, and it just becomes that much more stronger of a worker as individuals and, and as a collective. Um, thank you guys again, and uh, have a great day. And the person I want to focus on in the picture is my mom. So I was raised, I was born in Regent Park in the city of Toronto there, uh, and we moved to a place called Dana Finch. Some of you probably know what I'm talking about. Uh, and my mom was a single mom uh, growing up. My father wasn't around a lot. Um, she had, we had you know, four kids to take care of, and she worked two to three jobs to make ends meet. But throughout all of that, my mom always made sure that she was organizing people to come together and do things for the community. Engagement is not an event, right? It's a process. It's a continually evolving process that you have to always think about uh, in a deep way. So that's what I think about. Here in Ontario, we too must challenge ourselves to mobilize activists across the, the province, to engage, engage labor councils across the province, to focus on resources and on engagement and mobilization. Are we going to be doing that? So at the OFL, that is something that we're committed to do, and that's what we're going to keep doing. And we did that with the Make It Fair campaign. We engaged 50 labor uh, hubs through our labor councils. We mobilized over 600 activists to get involved in the campaign. And we hope to do the same in the next election and going forward. So I know that when we do that together, we really build a movement, and I hope to do that together with you. Thank you so much.